Kevin Coop here, and this is FaceTime with the Content Guy, coming to you today from Portland State University, uh, where I'm finishing up my summer adjunctivity. Uh, as always, it's always such an interesting time to spend time in the classroom uh, with students. Uh, the Portland State students are, are, are such a diverse group. Uh, they tend to be a little bit older. They tend to have a little bit more experience. Um, and so they bring a lot of different qualities to the classroom. You can have some really interesting conversations with them. And I want to I tell you about two of them. On that board, um, at one point during the class, I, I asked them to each to go up there um, as we were beginning class and said, now write down, I want you to write down three things um, that you would always like to have in, in your kitchen. Not knives, not forks, not glasses, not plates, not napkins. Three food or beverage items you'd always like to have. Um, and they thought about it and everyone and wrote it down. It was really interesting and a lot of beer, a lot of bottled water. Um, there was a lot of different kind of frozen pizza. Right? These are our college students. Uh, me, I had to do it too. I said I always want olive oil. I would always want eggs and I'd want albarino because that, I, can, I can always make a meal out of that. And it was interesting. So one of the things we talked about when all these uh, products were up on the board is we talked about the notion of replenishment. Because then we started saying, okay, well, if these are three items I always want to have in my kitchen, what can a really good retailer do to make sure I always have them? And can a really good retailer start to create a system whereby they establish a sense of loyalty to me or, or me to them by making sure I always have those items? And so we talked a lot about replenishment and they all love the idea of replenishment. The other interesting thing is one guy who wrote on, on, on the board had bottled water, bagels, and hot dogs. And it was interesting, we were talking about that. I said, well, you know, bagels. And, you just eat them dry? He goes, well, no, 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 I, I would, you know, put cream cheese on them. I said, oh, cream cheese. You didn't put that on there. He goes, no, no, because I probably eat a lot of hot dogs. I said, well, you don't, want a hot, you don't have hot dog rolls. You don't have ketchup. You don't have mustard. What's the deal? He goes, well, it made me pick three, which is totally true. I said, well, if, if, if I know as a retailer that you're going to always eat bagels, is that an opportunity for me to sell you different kinds of cream cheese? He goes, yeah. I said, and if I know you want, you love hot dogs, is that a way for me to sell you things like ketchup, relish, mustard rolls, that kind of stuff? He goes, yeah. I said, that's data. It's really important for, for retailers and for you as students thinking about the whole notion of data, not to think of it as numbers, not to think of it in an abstract way, but data is knowing that somebody buys bagels and that they're going to need cream cheese or they're going to need butter or they're going to need lox or whatever it happens to be. And to find out what they want and then find a way to give it to them. That's the power of data. And by the way, actionable data is something that almost every retailer has, but not every real retailer actually acts on it. And that's really, really important. So we talked about that. The other thing we were talking about, we talked a lot about Amazon, clearly, because they were really interested in that. And it came up at one point because we were having a conversation in class about the notion that Kroger is now going to start to charge a small fee for cash back at checkout. And one of the students had this idea and said, well, what happens if I'm ordering from Amazon? What if I told Amazon, I need $100. They're going to deliver to me today or they're going to deliver to me tomorrow. Was there a way Amazon could get me that kind of cash? And I thought that was a really interesting idea. I thought it was fascinating. I mean, Amazon is probably never going to be allowed to own a bank, but they could create relationships with banks. And is that a way that Amazon, let's say to Prime members, could say, listen, you want cash back, no fee? We can provide it to you. You're going to have to wait 24 hours. Now, there's clearly there's probably regulatory issues. There's probably security issues that have to, would have to be concerned. But I thought it was interesting to find out that that's how these students were thinking. They weren't thinking uh, about limitations. They were thinking about possibilities. I think that's a really good lesson for people in the retail business: not to think about limitations, not to think about what you can't do, but think about things that you can do. Amazon is a bank. Amazon providing cash back to Prime members? That's a really interesting idea. Anyway, that's my summer at Portland State University. Um, I will be back with, morning, with, uh, with uh, FaceTime with the content guy in a couple of weeks. Uh, in the meantime, that's what's on my mind this morning. And as always, I want to hear what's on your mind.